Hello and welcome to another video. Now, new people to the channel, what I'm particularly doing here normally is building my own suit of power armor, my own powered armored exoskeleton, if you will, like one of the previous prototypes you can see behind me. However, the next stage of the next exoskeleton build is getting a little bit delayed because I am making the legs out of carbon fiber instead of aluminium which has unfortunately ran over a little bit, meaning that I'm not gonna have time to get that ready for this week's video. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I thought I would go through some of the other exoskeletons that other people are making, the other suits of power armor that people are making on YouTube, Instagram, social media in general. Half of which, if you're watching this, you probably already know about, and some you probably don't. And I think we may as well start off with probably the most well-known, and that is Hacksmith who has been trying to make it real for quite a long time and has certainly made a lot of progress. Now, I actually think it's quite difficult to go through all of the different things that Hacksmith have done with power armor, exoskeletons, etc., as I think it's one of the earliest things he actually worked on. So we'll just go over the latest, which is the Fallout power armor suit that he's currently doing now. This thing is at least near full size Fallout power armor suit that's actually gonna be wearable and functional. A suit that not just handles its own weight, but actually increases the operator's strength with pneumatics powered by a compressor and even a little gasoline engine to run it. While the whole thing looks incredibly impressive from the look of it to even things like the powered hands, my favorite thing about this is actually the helmet, which has a fantastic augmented reality set up within the glasses. And something I didn't even know you could fit in so well into these glasses and general helmet setup was the fact that it's got infrared, Cameras as well as night vision, all augmented into it as well as a digital readout, which can monitor heart rate, power levels, and even radiation. And just how all that is fitted in does look absolutely fantastic. There's also this edge of practicality that I really like with both the suit from Fallout and how they're doing it, which I really think adds to the whole thing. Next, we'll go over to the king of the Iron Man suits, and that is Alex Lab, Alex Birken who's been making his own Iron Man suit for quite some time and is certainly, in my opinion, making the best when it comes to actual functionality and getting something as close to an Iron Man suit as you could actually have. While the suit does have a degree of 3D printed parts, like a lot of cosplay suits, his is not regular in that it's electroplated in metal and also uses composite materials to make sure it's as strong as possible, while also not being monstrously heavy. But the different thing about what Alex is doing with that is he's doing his own hydrogen fuel cell power plant, which that alone for a guy who appears to be doing it largely on his own is an incredibly difficult project to tackle, but he's managed to do it and managed to make it all look phenomenal at the same time, while also being able to use the hydrogen that is created from it for the muscles, for the suit, as well as other parts. Something that always has me in awe whenever I watch Alex's video is how good the Iron Man suit looks. And in fact, all of his video in general his whole setup, his whole vibe for the video. But how well polished the suit looks in his videos really does look like the Mark II Iron Man suit in Iron Man 1. And next up, I want to take a look at a guy called Nozzle Torino, that being what he goes by on Instagram. Hopefully I'm saying that right, but he's Italian, so I feel like I need to say it like this. He is doing a fantastic and detailed exoskeleton that seems to follow the body perfectly, particularly around the neck. He's gone through various different exoskeleton designs that I've been following over what is now years. And he's really been able to refine his design. All of his 3D printed components look incredibly detailed. I can only imagine the amount of time that has been spent on that. But it has certainly yielded results. Going back to the neck in particular, you can see here how it moves all perfectly around his head. Something very difficult to do. The whole thing seems to move and work perfectly and now he's even having new parts made out out of metal, all custom made, so it'll be much stronger than it used to be when it was 3D printed. You can see how he moves around in it here, how he maneuvers backwards and forwards, how well it fits, and how unique every little 3D model part actually is. It's also now got to the point of putting gas struts onto certain joints like the knees to provide some extra assistance. Overall, fantastic, can't wait to see it finished. I want to now move on to a guy on Instagram who goes by Advanced Body Systems. Now he hasn't been trying to make his own powered armored exoskeleton for that long. That long being a year or so, two years maybe. Which might sound like a long time, but to be honest, most people who are trying to make one of these, at least on social media, have been trying to make one for quite a while. 
even though it's just a suit that fits around you, there's a lot that goes into it, and a lot of trial and error. I think Alex Labs been building the Ironman suit for about four or five years. Hacksmith probably the same in some other variation, if not longer. I think I've been doing it for about three or four years now. But this guy who has got a small following on Instagram has made a lot of progress. He's got this suit with a, what I believe is a ceramic type of armor, but he's certainly progressed a long way, hence why I wanted to bring him up. My favorite feature with his is these rods that run up the wrist and onto the knuckles, which I think are out of braided wire, so that when you impact something with your fist, you have something to push against, but because they're rods that are fixed at both ends, they'll still allow your wrist to actually rotate, something that I thought was very clever. As hands and wrist mobility is something that's very tricky to do. So it'll certainly be great to see his progress in the future, especially as you look at where he's come from and what he's now got and where he'll be going next. Another page that I came across on Instagram, down as Hype Brother Official, has some great designs. I think he's down as wearable tech. The thing that I really liked with this was his gloves and hands. These are extremely well detailed, extremely well 3D printed and modeled, but it has a full actual articulation and linkage system all built in. Looks very clever and looks to actually function correctly. Extremely impressive and I just look at that and think the amount of work that's gone into just making those gloves will be tremendous, but it's certainly paid off. So how do I think my designs and my plans compare to all of the other ones that I've mentioned. And the thing is, it kind of doesn't, and most of the ones that I've mentioned don't really compare to each other. Something I've learned in trying to build a powered armored exoskeleton, a super power arm himself, is that you really need to keep to your vision and your thought of what your design is gonna be. If you try and mold it into some own, someone else's design, if you try to take a piece from theirs and a piece from theirs and add it into yours, it's probably just not gonna work because you've got a massive knock-on effect when you're building these suits as in change something on the wrist, it'll change something on the elbow, it changes something on the shoulder, on the back, and it goes all the way down to the feet. So you really need to keep at least like your design ethos and philosophy the same, which does mean a lot of people's different designs don't really compare with each other. But I have tried to design mine to be an actual functional combat ready suit of power armor when it's done. So things I have added into my design is that basically I'm trying to make it as least complicated as possible. Try and make sure that when everything's got dust, sand, muck, everything into it, it'll all still function correctly. It's all easily replaceable. And such things, including putting on, can all be done by the operator themselves. There's no need for other people. So because of that, my exoskeleton, my suit, isn't gonna look, in my opinion, as good as other people's is gonna look. I don't think it's gonna be as smooth and polished as Alex Labs. It's probably not gonna be as awe-inspiring as Hacksmith's and it's probably not going to have as much detail as Nozzle Torino's exoskeleton. But I am now confident after the fourth prototype, this next fifth prototype is going to work perfectly and is actually going to be usable, and you should also be able to do regular tasks like drive vehicles, for example. Not that you're going to do that on public roads. Another thing I thought I'd mention in this video is there will, of course, be military projects that are in warehouses somewhere, DARPA style, that are these fantastic pieces of technology, wearable exoskeletons, all of this deal. However, I do wonder how many there actually is because I think the cost overruns on that will have been tremendous. I imagine there is some near, near Iron Man level suit somewhere sat in a warehouse at DARPA that can't be used because it costs a billion dollars a suit. There is also the fact that technology moves on incredibly quickly. So AR glasses, for example, that are now readily available and pretty cheap that can be utilized for projects such as these didn't exist five years ago in the same manner, which means these long military projects will get outdated pretty quickly and might not be seen as useful. There's also the point that everyone who's trying to make these online have spent a lot of time and effort doing it. And if you were a company and you were trying to go for a potential military program or contract, but you needed to develop the exoskeleton first, you're probably going to be into millions by the time you've done it. Yes, with a team and facilities, it's not going to take anywhere near as long as it says take me or other people, but you are still going to be in millions. So that's a massive investment for a company to do to try to get a military contract that might not even come off. I've actually tried to enter into a military innovation program in the UK with no even kind of remote chance of success, barely even a response from it. So if you were a private company and you were making money in somewhere else and you were applying into military development programs, I think you'd quite quickly sack the idea off. 
But nevertheless, if there is some exoskeletons that I've missed, of which this wasn't an exhaustive list, so there probably is, please feel free to comment down below some that you've seen on Instagram, social media, wherever, on YouTube, or even some that companies have made that you think are interesting. And I'll probably have a look through them and do another video, as I didn't intend this one on being very long. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I hope to see you on the next video. We'll be doing the legs on the next video. I'll be doing a robotic prosthetic hand for a robot I'm going to make later on in the future. It'll soon be time to try the next exoskeleton on, do a mobility check, and then a mobility check with the armour and go from there. And last of all, I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.